Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. On my last two episodes on ATF channel, we spoke about change. But we really looked at it from the psychological aspects of why you change and so on and so forth. But today we want to look at another reason Muslims change. They change for the sake of Allah and they give up things for the sake of Allah. I'm your host Kamal al makki and today we're looking at leaving something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today I want to tell you a story. This is a true story that happened to one of the early Muslims. His name was Abu Bakr al-Ansari al-Bazzaz. This was a judge and he is known in Islamic history. And he tells the story and it's narrated by Ibn Rajab. It's mentioned in the biography of the judge in his book Tabaqat al-Hanabila. In the story, Abu Bakr narrates it himself. He says, I was, he was, when he was a young man in Mecca, and one day I was struck with severe, severe hunger. I was extremely hungry, and nothing could take care of this hunger. He says, I went out of my house searching for food, trying to find something to eat. And he says, I could find nothing. But I did find a pouch, a silk pouch, something that kind of looks like this. A silk pouch, and I took it with me, and I took it home. When I got home, I opened it and I saw a pearl necklace, the likes of which I have never ever seen before. Very beautiful necklace. So he says, I tied the pouch and I kept it in my house and I went out again looking for food. So while I was looking for food, I saw this old man and he was calling out loud, Man wajada kisan, sifatahu kada wa kada, walahu khumsumi'ati dinarin min al-dhahab. He says, I found this old man and he was yelling out loud, who has found a pouch or a bag? Its description is such and such and I will give him 500 gold dinars, meaning as a reward. And just so you know, gold dinars, a dinar is a gold coin and there are 12 dirhams in a dinar. So I said to the old man, come with me. And I took him home. And when I got home, I asked him to describe the pouch and the necklace. And he says he described them accurately. So I gave it to the old man. And the old man immediately gave me 500 gold dinars. So this was the reward that the man mentioned. So I said to him, it is incumbent upon me to return this, this necklace to you and to not take any reward for it. Because he's not really supposed to get a reward. The believer is honest and he just gives the belongings, he returns them back to whoever owns them. So the man insisted and he said, you have to take it. And he says, Wallahi, I was as hungry as could be. So he's mentioning that I was really hungry and I needed this. But he says, I said to the man, Wallahi alladhi la ilaha illa hu. I swear by the one with whom nothing is worthy of worship besides him, I will not seek reward from anyone besides Allah. And so the man then, he thanked me and he left. And because this was Hajj season, the man went back to his country. He said, as for what happened to me, I left Mecca and I went out to sea and I got on a ship where powerful waves destroyed the entire ship and everybody on board drowned and all the wealth and merchandise sank. And he says, I clung onto a piece of the ship, like basically a big wooden board or something like that, and the waves would take me left and right. And the waves kept taking me until in the end, he says, I remained at sea for a while, until in the end, the waves brought me to an island where the people that lived there were all illiterate and could not read and not write. He says, so immediately I went to the masjid and I sat down and I began to recite the Qur'an out loud. He says, when I recited the Qur'an out loud, people started to come to me and said, you know how to recite the Qur'an? Teach me the Qur'an until he said there was nobody left in the entire island except that he came to me and said, teach me to recite the Qur'an. He says, and a lot of good happened to me because of that. He says, while I was in the masjid, I also noticed that there was a, an old torn mushaf in the masjid, just one torn mushaf. He says, I took it and I was about to read from it. And everybody said, you know how to read? And I said, yes. And so they, everyone started to tell me, teach me how to write, teach me how to read. And I agreed and much good happened to me because of that. So I said, la bas, which means no problem. And so then they brought me their boys and their young men and I started to teach them to read and write and much good happened to me because of that. So then they wanted me to remain with them on the island. So they said, we have a young orphaned girl and she has inherited a lot of wealth. Why don't you marry her and you can remain with us on the island? So he says, I refused and they insisted and they compelled me and I got nothing from them but their insistence and their persistence. So I agreed. So they prepared her 
and her mahrams, meaning her guardians, brought her to me. And when I sat with them and I looked at her, he says, I was shocked to see that same necklace that I found in Mecca around her neck. He said, I was so shocked that I just kept staring at the necklace. And so her guardian said to me, he said, Ya Sheikh, you have broken the heart of this poor young girl. You only look at her necklace and you never once looked at her. So I said to them, I have a story with this necklace. And then I told them the story. And when I told them the story, they began to make tahleel, La ilaha illallah, and takbir Allahu Akbar. And they screamed out with tasbih, Subhanallah, until their voices filled the entire island. So I said to them, Subhanallah, what is wrong with you? They said, that old man that you returned the necklace to in Mecca, he is the father of this young girl. And ever since he came back from Hajj, he would constantly say, Wallahi, I have never seen a, a Muslim better than that young man who returned the necklace to me in Mecca. And he would constantly make dua, Oh Allah, make me meet him, Ajma' bayni wa baynahu, make me meet him so I can wed him to my daughter. So they said to him, the man passed away, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still answered his dua. He says, so then I married the woman, and she turned out to be a very good wife. And Allah azza wa jal blessed us with two boys. And so we lived happily for a while, and then she passed away, rahimahullah. So the boys and I inherited the necklace. And after a while, one of the boys died, and then the other passed away. And so I became the, the sole inheritor of the necklace and I sold it for 100,000 gold dinars. So this man later on he becomes a judge and he becomes well known and it is said that every time they needed some donation, they need to help people out, he would give money and they would ask him where did you get this money from and he would say هذا من بقايا ثمن العقد. This is from the remainder of the money of the necklace. So the moral of our story then is as the Prophet ﷺ said in the Sahih Hadith, مَنْ تَرَكَ شَيْئًا لِلَّهِ عَوَّضَهُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا مِّنْهِ Whoever leaves something for the sake of Allah, Allah will replace it with something better. So the question is, will you trust that if you leave something for the sake of Allah, that He will replace it with something better? So look at your life right now, and only you can do this for yourself. Look at your life right now, and what can you change? What do you do that's haram? What habit do you have that's haram? Will you leave it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And will you trust in Allah azza wa jal? Alright, so that's all the time we have for today. But in my next episode, I'm going to share something very personal with you. I'm going to tell you about something that I left for the sake of Allah, and my life became a lot better as a result of that. So tune in for that. And don't forget, Muhammad Hassan comes back with the good stuff again next week, inshallah. And he's also going to tell you about something that you can leave for the sake of Allah. Thanks for watching ATF channel. Sallallahu wa barak ala Muhammad wa ala ala sahbihi ajma'een. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum everyone. And that's the end of Sheikh Kamal's video. And if you look at the comment section, I'm the first one to leave a comment about something that I left for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it's not the subject of my next video. You're going to have to wait till next week to find that out. And to one Islam, I want to say not only do you have an excellent username, but you also have an excellent advice. Why didn't I ask people to make dua for me? It's such a wasted opportunity, and now it feels like it's too late. But you know, it's not too late for us to make dua for a Muslim 99's brother and sister-in-law because they've gone on Hajj. May Allah give them a blessed and accepted Hajj. To Muslim Brother 786, Jazakal Khair, I'm very glad you like our videos. But really, you know, it's not hard to make good videos. The real secret is tricking Sheikh Kamal into joining you. Jazakal Khair. Assalamu everybody.